This is the 415ers podcast, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three times a week on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Evan Giddings and Mark Grandy with you here as always. I hear what you're saying about Garoppolo, and I understand that it's also his first game. And that's why I do think that there will be improvements from the quarterback position because it was his first game this season. Now, if Kyle Shanahan continues to scheme guys open, as he has in years past, Jimmy G has demonstrated that, yes, there are physical limitations, but he's also demonstrated that he can hit those throws enough for you to win football games. Now, he's not going to do it 85 90% of the time like some of the other top 10, top five quarterbacks in the league. We know, we know what Jimmy G is. He's a top 15 at best in the league. 16, 17, that's where he's been usually year in and year out. And that's also been good enough to get you to two conference championship games and one Super Bowl. So I don't think it's a situation where you're going to expect that every single week. And that to me is why I'm tuning in to each and every game. Because while it's not necessarily comfortable to not know which quarterback is going to show up, I'm also very much intrigued to see how Jimmy Garoppolo can get better this season and how Kyle Shanahan's play calling, in my opinion, can get better this year. Maybe not as much in the passing game, but certainly in the running game. And to your to your point about not having his full you know, load of running backs, well, he hasn't necessarily needed them in the past. It's true. He usually typically uses a rotation of guys. I mean, just take a look at last season. Elijah Mitchell was a six-round pick that was not supposed to be on the initial top three depth chart. But Raheem Mostert goes down. Trey Sermon turns out to be a bust. He's no longer on the team anymore. And Mitchell steps up and turns into a near 1,000-yard rusher. So this year, to be honest, I don't think there's an excuse in the running game for you not to be as good as you've been in years past. Because Kyle Shanahan, while I don't believe him to be the quarterback whisperer that people purported him before he got the 49ers job, and even to some extent with the 49ers, I think he's demonstrated an ability to create running backs. And so that's why this season, I expect that to be the norm. I expect that to be the standard. I'm not saying there needs to be another bell cow that immediately steps up, but Jeff Wilson Jr., along with the rest of those guys back there, they need to run the football better, and they will need to do that if you're going to win Jimmy uh, win games with Jimmy Garoppolo. I agree. They have to run the ball better. They also have to run the ball more. 19 rushing attempts, 18 if you don't include a, a Jimmy Garoppolo run that didn't get any yards. So well, I, but agree. I, I also get you not running the ball that much if you're getting two yards a pop. That's why I'm, I'm saying the creativity needs to be more, and that's why you need to create more yards is because you can't win by passing the ball 35 times a game with Jimmy G. That has not ever been the recipe for success. I mean, you average, and I know it's a little inflated because of the 37-yard run by Jeff Wilson Jr., but, I mean, you averaged 4.6 per run in this game. That includes the, the nothing run from Jimmy Garoppolo. It includes Debo Samuels, 5 for 6. Jeff Wilson Jr., even if you take out, let me do some quick math here, if you take out that 37-yard run, he's still averaging over 3 yards per carry. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's not like over that in fact like three and a half yards per carry so that's yeah, not a like terrible number 37 or something yeah it, it's not it's not terrible it's not absolutely fantastic but that's still a decent number jordan mason had one carry went for seven yards obviously a small sample size and you have no clue if if he was going to be effective if he got more carries but i'm sorry i think that's still a good enough number you know from jeff wilson jr specifically to encourage you to run the ball more i mean 12 carries 75 yards including one that almost broke for six I, and i know this was a really weird game because you just couldn't move the ball i mean denver despite the fact that they that they uh had nine three and outs i mean they ran 18 more plays than you 70 to 52 you did have more yards you got obviously more yards per play than denver did um I think if you have an issue with Kyle Shanahan's play calling in the game against Denver, uh, I don't think you can look at the passing game. I don't think you can look at the passing scheme. Maybe a bit on the running scheme. I agree with you. It's gotten a little bit predictable. But I would say I think you just needed to run the ball more. You needed more volume of that to try to wear down some clock, to try to keep the Denver defense on the field a little bit longer because on the other side, your defense is getting worn down. Trying to defend 70 plays, I mean, that's not easy. So 
if there's some blame for Kyle Shanahan in the play calling, I, I would say it is in the run game. And now moving forward, I think that it's going to be even more difficult because you sustained more injuries in this game. I mean, Trent Williams now with the high ankle sprain out likely at least a month. The general timeline for high ankle sprains are four to six weeks. But when asked on his Monday conference call, are you considering IR for Trent Williams? Kyle said, uh, Kyle said, uh, not right now, but you know, if, if things don't progress the way that we want them to, it's a possibility. So this could be a really long injury for Trent Williams. And I'm sure the run game in the past game will suffer because of it. Because as we know, he's the best left tackle in football. One of the best players in general in football. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely going to hurt. And they're going to need to find ways to cover up the blind side of Jimmy Garoppolo better than they'd have to with Trent. I mean, you could pretty much pencil in zero pressure, zero sacks. Anything coming from that side is not going to get to Jimmy Garoppolo. So that that's certainly something to pay attention to as well, especially in, in the passing game, I think, more so. Um, just because, honestly, I think the offensive line, we haven't talked about it much, and we haven't needed to talk about it much, despite it being... I, I know you were a little higher on them than other people entering the season, but with three guys up front with large in part little to no experience in the NFL or minimal experience, I should say, I think they've done pretty well. And I mean, I expect that to continue or I hope it continues, but taking a look at what they need to do. I do think the volume of runs will increase, but I also think that, and maybe this is to your point, like it's also easier for teams to, stack the box when you know that Garoppolo is not going to press the ball down the field, even in the intermediary range of 10 to 15 yards. And when you're able to create more pressure, it means less time. Jimmy's trying to get the ball out quick. We saw a lot of happy feet from Jimmy Garoppolo against the Denver Broncos, which is never a good thing. But I think that Shanahan, to me, it, it, it always comes back to him just because of at least what I expect from the 49ers. And what I expect them to do is win boring. I know at the top of this podcast, you mentioned that this team is going to be one of the more you know boring uh, looking groups, and maybe that's how they have to win. I mean, I know that before the season, I felt like primarily because of the quarterback situation, this was a team in San Francisco that was going to be maybe the most interesting group in football just because of the wild card of Trey. Kyle Shanahan with his new toy, a top five defense. They had a lot going for them that made them an interesting watch, even if they're not lighting up the scoreboard. Now, all that allure is gone, and you're back to essentially, as we mentioned in the previous episode, the 2021 49ers, which were not a team that lit up the scoreboard. So to me, even though you're, you're kind of, I guess, concerned about how boring this team is going to be, to me, that almost gives me you know, a, a little bit of comfort because I know that they can win boring. It's just now about executing and figuring out ways to run the ball more, create more pressure, maybe take a couple of shots. Hopefully Jimmy hits them. If he doesn't, you rely on that defense that has now allowed basically 10 points in the last two games. Yeah, the defense is, is phenomenal. Points allowed, they rank third in the NFL. Total defense second in terms of yards allowed per game. Passing defense, they're first. Rush yards per attempt, third overall. Third down percentage, they're top 10 at ninth overall, so they're getting off the field at a relatively high clip as well. But the offense, I mean, points scored, 28th. Total yards, 23rd. Passing yards, 29th. They're middle of the pack rushing yards per attempt right now at 13th, so the running game is still the strength of this offense. Of course, it's only three games. The numbers, you know, viable to change with, with every play and, and every series just because it's a relatively small sample still. And you consider the teams that you've played. I mean, it doesn't exactly inspire confidence moving forward, but there's also the issue of the conditions in Chicago, you know, a, a lot going in. But still, this is a very good defense. Uh, it, it's it's a defense on a team that that deserves to be a better than, than one and two. But I think the other key... We, we kind of briefly touched on Trent Williams and some of the injuries, Evan, for the 49ers right now. I think the other key to unlocking this game and then this offense, I should say, for the 49ers is getting George Kittle involved once again. I feel like it's been 
a really long time since he's had a classic George Kittle game. You look at his last seven games, Evan, including last year's playoffs. It includes three playoff games. In seven games, Kittle's last seven games, 19 catches, 196 yards, and one touchdown. That's just not good enough. And I know when he's not catching the ball, when he's not running routes, he's doing a fantastic job in the trenches, opening up a lot in the run game. But when you have a dynamic pass-catching tight end, such as George Kittle, you have to get him involved more in the passing game. There is no excuse. 19 catches, 196 yards, one touchdown in seven games. Kittle should be averaging that every two games moving forward. That is a very, very concerning number. And if the Niners want to try to right the ship offensively, George Kittle has to be in the middle of it. But you can't have it both ways, Mark. I mean, you just said that you're not really faulting Shanahan for his passing play calling because of because I'm, of the I'm quarterback. Ta- I'm talking about in the Denver game specifically. I, I don't think you can you can blame Kyle Shanahan uh, because there were so many open receivers that Jimmy Garoppolo missed in that game. I, I think there are larger issues in general that we've seen a trend from over the you know dating back to last season. Um, and I, I think most of that is the run game predictability, but I will say, um, George Kittle needs to be involved more and whether that's Shanahan designing more plays specifically for him or just Jimmy Garoppolo relying on him more, maybe it's a bit of both, but I, George Kittle needs to be involved more. I think he does too. The question is how, because if your formula for success, and, and I certainly want to get into this as we come close to wrapping up this episode, taking a look at the Rams game, which that episode will drop on Friday. If you're running the ball 30 times at least, which to me is kind of the the number, the threshold, which you need to be at, at least for this 49ers team right now to be successful, then you're probably looking at, you know, 25 to 30 passes, maybe a little bit more if it's a tight game for Garoppolo. So then how are you divvying up targets? Like, does it got to be 10 for George Kittle? Does he need to get, you know, at minimum eight looks, um, how many are going to Debo? How many are going to Ayuk? You know, like when you actually do the math, I think it is, I do agree that George Kittle should be used more than he is as a pass catcher, but with Trent Williams now going down the offensive line, the blocking is going to need more help to me. I could completely see Kyle Shanahan saying George Kittle, not to say that he is not valuable as a pass catcher, but he could be even more valuable as a blocker now with Trent Williams being out than he was before. So if Kittle shows up for another three catch, you know, 20 yard performance, similar to what he get, did against Denver, to me, that's I, I'm not going to be shocked by a George by a non George Kittle game as you're talking about because it has been his mo to have a couple of huge games per season and everyone go wow I can't believe that George Kittle you know broke out when he did that's what he should be doing every single week but then the next week he comes back to what you're talking about and laying out in the playoffs which is a couple of looks here and there and being used as a dominant force in the running game yeah no you're right it's kind of in the story of his career where everyone clamors for more George Kittle and then the team finds ways to you know, win elsewhere. And every once in a while, he he kind of breaks out for a gigantic performance. There was kind of a funny moment last week when he was meeting with the media, the George Kittle that is, you know, previewing the Denver game. He was asked about the last time he played the Denver Broncos. Uh, I believe it was 2018, a home game inside a Levi's Stadium. He had over 200 yards in the first half. In the first half alone in that game, including, I think, one like 80 yard touchdown where he just ran free down the right sideline. Uh, And he was kind of joking with reporters when someone asked him, so like what happened in the second half? No catches. Like, did they try to just force feed you the ball to get that receiving record? I think he was only like five yards shy of the the single game tight end receiving record. And uh, he was like uh, only like once or twice. Thanks, Kyle. Like jokingly you know, taking a shot at Kyle for not just giving him the ball more in the second half of a game that was already in hand to get him the record. Um, But I think, you know, that kind of underhanded comment by George Kittle, you know, obviously a joke. He did not mean it. It's kind of how 49ers fans, I saw you raise your eyes there. It's kind of how 49ers fans feel about Kyle Shanahan and how generally uninvolved George Kittle is in the passing game. 
but I, I would agree with you in that he's he's so important to the running game that it's kind of a, a hard balance to to strike. It's hard to find that middle ground because he does both so incredibly well. And because Trent Williams is out, Colton McKivitz likely will fill in for him at left tackle. It, it kind of makes it even more difficult. Um, but I'll still hold hold to, to my original point in that when you have such a dynamic pass catcher, you have to get him involved more at least than what he did in the Bronco game. I mean, you look at at uh, what he did there, four catches, 28 yards on, on five targets. It's not terrible. At least he threw him the ball five times. But I think he should be seeing eight, nine, or ten targets a game and hopefully getting at least six catches a game. And some of that could also be, you know, the quarterback's not really leading him, allowing him to pick up those yards after catch that George Kittle has made a living on. Um, I also think, too, that, I mean, I, I expect him to, I mean, it, it's just so hard to project. Look, I got George Kittle on my fantasy team, but I'm not expecting him each <laughs> and every week to put up a 20-point game. Like, that's just, I don't know, kind of what you have to expect. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Uh, if I if I had George Kittle on my fantasy team, it would be a weekly dis- uh, decision. Do I start him or not? Because I wouldn't be sure. And so far, week one has been a disappointment. But on the <laughs> other hand, I could see him this week blowing up and you know finding a way to have a big game against the Rams as he's done in the past. So uh, it, it'll be very interesting. We'll have a lot more thoughts on that coming up on Friday's episode as this has been the 415ers podcast three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. I am Evan Giddings. That is Mark Grandy. Mark, I appreciate you as always, man. Yep, you too. We'll talk to you again on Friday. All right.